by this point you should have done PCR, cleaned up your PCR fragment, quantified it, and now we need to clone it and to see and then eventually sequence it of course. So the intermediate step of that is putting that fragment of DNA that you've amplified, putting that into a vector, um, a plasmid vector. And the kit we're going to use to do that is the Promega PGM T kit. And everything is pretty much supplied for us, but um, we still have to mix the reagents together in the right proportions. So there's one thing you need to consider, and that is how long your fragment is and how much of your fragment are you going to put into the vector. So there's this, turn on the light here, there is this equation that talks about optimizing the insert to vector molar ratios. That's for you to read and figure out exactly how to or how much insert you need to include with your reaction. Now there is a quick start. Once you have this figured out, there is a, a quick protocol that tells you in a nutshell how to do the vector ligations. We're going to do this part first. This is the ligations. And essentially, you get the reagents out and you put them and you centrifuge them to collect reagents at the bottom of the tube. You vortex them to make sure your uh, reagents haven't settled or separated somehow in the tubes. You mix these together according to the microliter amounts that are listed here. And then essentially you can let it sit at room temperature on the counter for an hour. Alternatively, you can put it in the refrigerator overnight, it says, for maximum number of transformants. And now I have three tubes. You can see them labeled here. I've got one for my control, one for the ligation of my DNA, and the other one, this is my <clears throat> DNA that I'm going to ligate. This is the DNA that I've cleaned, okay? And this is going to be the DNA that I'm ligating into a vector. This is the control. Okay, so now we're going to follow the recipe here, like they say in the quick protocol. We need five microliters of the 2x rapid ligation buffer. Okay, so now I'm mixing up. It's well mixed, right? Because I've been shaking it because it's been to get it to thaw, but I always make sure that it's it's good practice to always to make that mix, um, particularly the buffer, because the buffers can sometimes uh, separate or, or precipitate. So now that I've mixed it, you know, there's some on the tube, the lid of the tube, so give it a quick spin, unbalanced in the, if you have these things balanced or not, it's not a big deal, just hold them still when they vibrate around the counter. So this is the uh, 2x ligation mix, we need 5 microliters of that. I don't need to change tips here because this will, this will be the first thing in the tube. So I open up, I put the control buffer, I put buffer into the ligation. Okay, and screw the lid on. Okay, next. Now, not always in molecular biology does it matter with the order of reagents that you add them to the tube. Um, in general, it's good practice to follow the order that's written on the sheet, regardless of how the numbers are written. If you're lazy, you might want to start with the reagents that have the most volume, because then you're going down from 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 on the pipette, and you don't have to do so much dialing here with your hand. But that isn't always the best practice because sometimes these reagents are listed um, for a reason in that order. Uh, so the best practice is to follow the reagent list down in order that they appear and put in the microliters that it says. And this is true for not just this protocol but in any protocol that you find in molecular biology. Now with that said, there are protocols where, even in this one, where it, does, it won't matter that much, but it's just good practice and, and you're safe if you do it this way. Okay, so let's add the vector next. One microliter. I was double checking that this is the 0.1 microliter to 2 microliter pipette. So we'll get one microliter of the easy vector. Okay. I like watching the the, wa the water, the colorless liquid, as it's being pipetted in from one tube to another. Let's go 
position. Okay, and then we put the vector in with the ligation mix as well. Okay, again, this is the ligation of my DNA fragment. This is going to be the control, an L and a C. I usually arrange these in order in the way that I've used them. So I've used the buffer there, and now I've used the vector. Next thing we're going to add is our DNA, the control, or the DNA tube. And then we're going to add sufficient amount of water so that the final reaction volume is 10 microliters. Okay? I know the concentration of this DNA, and we want to use 2 microliters based on that formula of this prepared mix of uh, template. So we'll put 2 microliters of the DNA. Okay. Now that makes five, six, seven, eight, nine. When we add the ligase, we're going to need at least one microliter of water to make it ten. So let's add that water now. Okay. So now I've gone left to right. I've done all these reagents. The last thing we add is the enzyme. Now the enzyme's in the freezer. We don't get that out until we need it because um, it does have. A, uh, expiration, if you will, or a half-life uh, it, when it's at warm temperatures. And so we leave it in there and just wait until we need it. So here's the ligase. It's the green cap tube. Um, once again, flick it a little bit, mix it, make sure all the enzyme is down to the bottom. Only takes a second. There we go. Put it on ice. Keep it cool. Now we need one microliter of the ligase in each of the reactions. Now you might ask, does it matter which one you do first, control or this L tube? And in reality it doesn't. The important thing is you treat them both the same, otherwise it's not a control, right? And all enzymes are actually in uh, either a glycerol stock, usually it's glycerol so they don't freeze or go hard in the, in the freezer. Some of it tends to stick on the tip. And I don't put the tip to the bottom of this tube. If you do, then when you pulls up, see I haven't even sucked any up, but yet there is glycerol and enzyme on the outside of the tip. You might not be able to see it in the camera, but I can see it here. So I usually just put the tip far enough, not all the way to the bottom of the tube, but just past the surface layer or that meniscus, if you will, of the enzyme tube. And then I, um, when I add it to the DNA, I usually put it all the way down, but also pump it a few times to make to get all the glycerol out that might be stuck to the tube and if there's a little bit left in there that's okay that's part of the reaction but um, it's not all the you know a whole bunch of enzyme that you're missing out of the reaction because it's been mixed somewhat already okay so now we've added it um, these let's give them a mix and in this case <coughs> it says mix the reactions by pipetting we don't want to flick it because still the control plasma is somewhat fragile so the reaction is 10 microliters large. I'm going to make put this at about 80 percent, 70 percent, you know, so that's 8 microliters. And uh, just plunge it up and down a few times. And this will mix it well. Okay. So I mix the control, and we're going to let it sit here for an hour. I'll do the same thing with the DNA. So we don't want to flick this yet, and we don't need to spin it. So we've been careful to put things down at the bottom, and we'll let them sit there for an hour while the ligase is attaching the ends of the plasmid, because this is an open vector, you know, it's a linear, it's not circular in this, in this tube. And it attaches those ends to both sides of the insert to make a circular molecule, and the ligase is what's causing that to happen. And after this, we will put this circularized plasmid into uh, an E. coli bacteria.